So in my previous video about Android 11 and One UI 3, I have shown the top 10 features that came with the official update on the Note 20 Ultra. Those were the basic obvious features that you can watch here, but this video is all about the tips, tricks and hidden features that are not easy to notice. So let's get to the first one. So if you have a Galaxy device, you probably know that when sharing a file or a picture, Samsung suggests the frequently used apps on the top so you can easily share to them. But what you can further do is to customize which app or services appears on that top board. Let's say you mostly share Instagram stories and WhatsApp messages from your phone. When clicking the share button, you can look for the Instagram icon, tap and hold it and choose to pin the story option. And same for WhatsApp messaging. You can add up to 8 apps or services there and next time you share something, the pinned options will be always suggested for an easier access. Next is the ability to clean memory for individual apps. Usually when you want to free up some RAM, you just head into the device care settings and optimize it. Or enter the memory section and tap the clean option. With this update, you can select which apps you want to include or exclude from the cleaning process in this suggested list, in case you want to keep some data in RAM. Or you can go a step further to completely exclude apps from being cleaned from the RAM using this exclude apps option. For example, I personally exclude my to-do list app since I frequently use it and I need it for a faster access. Number 3 is the ability to find your phone even when it's offline and that's using the Samsung Find My Mobile settings. So if God forbid your phone got stolen or lost while it's offline or even in airplane mode, the phone will be still able to scan for nearby other Galaxy devices. And if one connected device is found, your phone will use that device location to update yours in the cloud. So you can get the location via Samsung Find My Mobile web application. So this is like Galaxy phone users community helping you finding your device. Next is the ability to show the display's refresh rate in real time. Well, in case you find it useful, you can head into the developer options and activate the show refresh rate toggle. This way you will have the refresh rate value on the top corner, maybe you're gaming and need to see if your game is supporting the 120Hz refresh rate or if there are some frames dropping. The fifth feature is amplifying ambient sound with a simple gesture. When you have your earbuds on, you can amplify your surroundings by swiping up with two fingers from the home screen. If you are in a noisy place, the earbuds will pick up conversation sounds around you more clearly. You can activate this in the settings, accessibility, hearing enhancement, amplify ambient sound and select the two fingers gesture. Next is the new Samsung Gallery update. When you edit photos, instead of the app saving duplicate photos of the original and edited one, the gallery will now keep one photo from which you can revert to the original picture using this revert option. The other gallery feature is when you click this eye icon on the top, you will be able to use Bixby Vision to research similar images, read QR codes on the photos, and also automatically translate detected texts. Very handy. Number 7 is an interesting app for your Edge panel. It has nothing to do with One UI 3, but I thought it is interesting enough to show you. The app is called Hue Edge, and you can install it from the Galaxy Store. It will allow you to control your Philips Hue lights directly from the Edge panel. It will connect to your Philips account, then all the smart lights you have will appear here, along with your rooms, scenes, and zones. You can either switch on and off the light, or tap and hold it to access the colors, change the brightness or color saturation. The app actually works incredibly fast with no lags but only when you are connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your Hue lights. This is a one-time paid app, it only costs about 2 bucks and I will leave links for it below. Last but not least is not a feature but actually a visual indication. For apps that you have configured a limit timer for in the digital well-being settings, you will have this small heart under their icons. This way you will know from the home screen which app have a limited use time. Unfortunately you cannot access that app timer by clicking that small heart for example or make any other quick actions. So this was the video, hope you guys enjoyed the tips, leave a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.